Welcome back and thanks for staying with us on Daybreak right here on Trust TV. Well, now it's time for us to take a look at the major issue for our discussion this morning. President Mohamed Buhari has said he has fulfilled his commitment he made to Nigerians in his May 29, 2015 inaugural address to frontally and courageously tackle Boko Haram terrorists and stabilize the country. Now, the president stated this while speaking at a state banquet organized in his honor in Dematuru, the Yobi state capital, on Monday night by Governor Maim Alabuni. Buhari, who noted that the most critical security challenge inherited by the administration nearly eight years ago was the potent and pervasive threat of terrorism, expressed delight that normalcy had returned to affected states in the northeast. Now, um, we have in the studio to talk about uh, this particular issue, um, Dr. Yahuza Ahmed Gizel, and he's a security consultant, and um, he's visited some of the areas affected by Boko Haram and insurgency. Um, he joins us right here in the studio. Welcome to Daybreak. Morning. Thank you. Good morning. All Good right. morning, viewers. All right. Thank you for and, being um, here. And, of course, we have... Um, who has remained with us in the studio um, to, to actually shed more light on this issue. Welcome once again. Thank you. Good All good right. Morning. Thank you. Okay, so I think, Sandy, would you like to take this Welcome, one? Dr. Geza. Uh, you, as, as the introduction rightly captures, you, you visited a number of these places. Um, and every time we get the president undertake this visit or even uh, visit uh, or participate in international engagement. He keeps saying that the situation has improved, the situation is better, he has delivered on his mandate as far as security, uh, the security situation is concerned. Uh, how, from what you have seen, can you reconcile the president's statements with the reality on ground? Well, I think uh, uh, President Muhammad Buhari should stop deceiving Nigerians by making such uh, 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 statements. Uh, simply because, can he tell me that Monguno is free? Can Buhari justify that Michika is free? Can Buhari justify that Meha is free? Can Buhari justify that Gwambi uh, is free? Can Buhari certify that Mubi is free? Can Buhari certify that uh, uh, Mot, uh, uh, Buniadi from Damaturu, through Bunigari, uh, through uh, Buratei, uh, through Miriga, to be is free. Can Buhari justify that your route between Damaturu and Pataskum is free to pass all the time? Can Buhari justify that between Pataskum to, uh, 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 to, to, to Dacia, to Kazir, to uh, Jakusku, uh, to other places down to Gashua is free? Can Buhari tell me that all areas is in Gombe has now been freed? What about the couple, of course, we can accept and agree that there are some level of improvement in terms of reduction in bombing, in terms of reduction in bombing in the mosque and the churches, in terms of maybe capital of, of offensive against markets and other public places. But for President Muhammad Buhari to tell Nigerians that he has fulfilled his promise as far as Boko Haram is concerned, that is just a storytelling. And um, I, of course, he made mention, I have listened carefully and I have examined all the statements he have made. And um, going by all he have said, uh, that he made reference that he is 80 years of age. He had enjoyed all it requests for Niger and Nigeria made him to be what he is. But I want him to remember, has he flown, fly the roads between Damaturu, between uh, Gombe, Yobe, Adamawa, Borno, and all other states of the northeastern part of the country. Mm. What we will have, what will have justified that yes, he has succeeded in attaining and delivering the mandate as promised. As mm. he lost, uh, he, he, he shed tears some days when he said that Nigerians have been cheated. Is mm. the fact that we will have seen Muhammad Buhari flying the roads. As he flied, as he flied them in 2013, 2011, 2014, and even part of the 2015. Okay, Dr. but we have seen Muhammad Buhari flying on by air, using the helicopters, while the ordinary people are still being killed, assassinated, and many. He made mention that 
uh, inhabitants of the northeastern part of the country have been denied access to education, access to commercial activities, access to academic activities, access to social activities. Mm. But yet, those social activities, they have been denied. How many schools have been rebuilt? Mm. I want to tell President Muhammad Buhari that in the last six months, I have visited all the affected local governments in those areas, even though during the, the hitch, the time when the crisis was, uh, was as it peaks, I also visited those areas. Okay, Dr. So it doesn't mean that because he, of his effort, mm. I was able to visit the area. Okay. Dr. I visit the area even during when the security challenges was at peak. Okay, doctor, thank you very much for those um, opening statements. Uh, just so that we are able to exhaust all the vital areas, uh, I would like um, uh, Marlon Nasser to to contextualize some of the these, these conversations for us. You you were also an editor of a very important paper over the period when these issues were at its peak, and and um, you were at the forefront of documenting some of this this incident. Would it be right uh, to say that we had not made any progress over the years, or that the progress are not are not um, tangible as, as we would expect. What's your perspective of the kind of progress you think we have made over the years? Well, uh, if you listen to what the president was actually trying to say, uh, actually even when he came on board, you know, he tried to like walk back on some of the promises, you know, that were made during the campaign. So if the president is now coming out <coughs> to say that I have fulfilled all the promises that I have made, probably what he is trying to tell you is that uh, some of the things that you must have had are probably not things that mm. he believed, mm. you know, uh, to be uh, maybe part of the things promised. that he promised uh, Nigerians. Mm. Uh, it's certainly going to be unfair, mm. you know, to say that we have not made any progress mm. uh, since the president came on board. Uh, if you know uh, the, the, the Northeast very well, uh, you will know that uh, even the number of trips that you now have Mm. in that part of uh, Nigeria, uh, they have greatly improved, you know. Uh, places that you couldn't visit uh, in a while, you know, you are now able to visit them. And uh, that are some of the things that we should be looking at, you know, to be able to understand or contextualize what uh, the, the president, president was actually uh, trying to say. But to say that you have fulfilled, then mm. probably we may not have need you know, for uh, the kind of security deployment that mm. we have in that region mm. Mm. and uh, the, the likes. So uh, for the president to come out to say that boldly, uh, you know, I think it's a bit of an exaggeration. Mm. No, uh, but you know? that the president doesn't have the, 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 the correct picture of the situation on ground because he, he does rely on reports being given to him by people on ground. Maybe could that be the, could that be the case? Well, you know, as the president, you have like access to so many information mm -hmm. and uh, of course you know those on the ground may not want you to know certain things uh, especially mm -hmm. the ones mm -hmm. that will put them in bad light mm -hmm. but as the president you should also be able you know to find a way of getting your own information mm -hmm. because you are the president you have the contacts you can reach the governor you can reach other stakeholders in the state and be able to get information which you can use you know side by side with what uh, all the security agents are now telling you so that uh, you'll be able to take, uh, you know, the necessary decision based on the information that you have. Mm. Uh, doctor, coming back to you, um, if from your visit it does appear that the situation has, is still as volatile as it used to be, uh, can you help us situate where you think the problem is? Is it underreported or deliberate misreporting? Because I mean, at other times when, when media houses attempt to even give publicity to the, the government officials come up and say we are glorifying the terrorists. We are at a fix at what kind of publicity to even give the incident. Because it does appear that publicity, in a way, sort of fuels a sense of achievement on the part of these terrorists uh, and gives them the impression that, yes, we are, making the we are getting the kind of attention well, on the one hand. <coughs> and on the other hand, uh, ignoring this report, is now beginning to create a sense of achievement on the part of the government to then suggest that things were not as bad as they used to be. Where do you think the missing link is for well, us, both as uh, civil society, people, journalists, or even, even those in government? Well, uh, one thing we have to clearly state 
is that, yes, of course, government and the security agencies deserve some level of commendations. We cannot condemn in totality and say that there is no progress recorded. Mm. But the progress recorded is meaningless mm. to the fact that we have the courage, the confidence, based on the trust and the confidence of the public entrusted on the leadership of President Muhammad Buhari. Mm. I'm sending a message if President Muhammad Buhari is listening to me, and I'm sending the message to his ears. What I mean by his ears is those who are reporting to him to please follow up with him and tell him that he should open his airtel line that was on use up to the time he was eight months old in the presidential villa. And that was the airtel line that he has been using during the campaign period of the 2027, 2011, uh, 2007, 2011, and even the 2015, when he succeeded in becoming the president of the Pan Republic of Nigeria. I'm sure those are the grassroots that have been feeding him with information, have been providing him information right from Goza, Dikwa, Oba, Chibok, Buniadi, Biu, Haul, Shafa, Yimishkira, uh, 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 and other places, the southern, uh, northern, southern Borno, and uh, southern Adama and northern Borno, all those areas and all the locations of Monguno and others where Boko Haram had been uh, terrorizing uh, Dambua and other LGS, and including even the Jere that is not off to, which is just a step out of Borno, uh, Jere LGA. I'm very sure Muhammad Buhari could have had a privilege even of receiving SMS because I know and he know that I'm part of the documenting team that have been recording and documenting those informations that we have been receiving from the grassroots. Okay. So, so if at all mm. we can have, he can have this. I cannot say that the security have not been providing him with relevant information or he has not had a privileged way of getting those informations. I know his relationship with radio. Mm -hmm. I know his relationship with the television. Over the years, over 20 years or even more than that. So somebody who knows who is President Muhammad Buhari very well. I don't need anybody to tell me who is President Muhammad Buhari. And he don't need anybody to tell him who is Dr. Huza Gizu. As far as information and documentation is concerned. So I believe even if those unscrupulous elements among the security agencies have been denying him right to correct information. There is no local government in the northeastern part of the country that Muhammad, President Muhammad Buhari, on his that airtel, which I can call it now, on that airtel, if he can open it, there is no local government in the northeastern part of the country, especially the front security challenged LGS that President Muhammad, Muhammad Wari doesn't have or don't have a contact of at least five people. Okay, so so if at all the shout we yeah. have been making, mm. the examinations I have been making myself mm. Mm. through the national and international media over mm. time mm. have not reached to the ears of the President Muhammad Buhari or either directly or indirectly the intimidations I have suffered from some of the agencies of the government mm. because of the boldness mm. and ability to speak on behalf of the voiceless mm. through the period of eight years mm. that he has spent as a president of Nigeria. I cannot say that he have not had the privilege to have listened to those. And I know some of these informations, I even shared it mm. through the WhatsApp and through other media. And I'm sending also a message. Let him visit Google and Google Dr. Yehuza Gizu. I'm sure I have been saying it. And I have been sending the link. I'm sure he must have reached, received informations from me and from many other researchers and investigators, investigators and experts and other consultants, we have been risking ourselves, or I have been risking myself, to visit all the security front locations okay. in all parts of the country, especially the, in the eastern part of okay. the country. Doctor, so like the schools to, like and to, other, to, uh, other things yes. have not been really placed or okay. reverted or okay. rebuilt. Okay. So okay. if so we are really at peace yes. and Boko Haram is no more, Hmm. Then the question 
of President mm. Muhammad Buhari making those assertions, yes. deceitful statement mm. from an old man of 80 years of age, so, I felt ashamed. So, Doctor, this is what I wanted us to say, and I would need you to quickly respond to this so that I can also get Malin Nasri's perspective. Uh, we understand from what you, from your account, that the situation is not exactly the way the president Absolutely. is painting it. Yeah. Uh, so my question is, we we need to do, to move to a point where things uh, are taken over by systems. Today we have a president Buhari whose number you have. Tomorrow we'll have a president whose number the communities do not have. We'll have to find a way to elevate these things to a level where the system, as we have it, can respond without necessarily having the president back on, 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 on it. So my, my question was really, what did you find as the missing link? It, let, because he is the president. He is the president of 774 local government. It is impossible to go through complaints from all of these handsets, bearing all other things that he needs to attend. Where do you think the missing link is? Is it that we all are not reporting enough? Or that there is, that there is a system that, that sort of prevents the president from getting the correct information? I would like you to make your response in 30 seconds so that we yeah. can also um, we co I have to commend the media, especially the trust Daily Trust and Trust TV and other media houses, mm. you have been doing very well and you have been fair enough in terms of making extraordinary sacrifice in generating those informations. Mm. None of the presidential contenders, as I'm speaking to you today, mm. none of them, ranging from Konkoso, Tinubu, Atiku and others, that do not have a representative at their fingertips mm as I'm talking to you, like President Muhammad Buhari also had some times back. So even if you cannot have by political word, you can have by a local government. Mm. And um, out of every five, mm. you can have one that can tell you the blunt truth. Mm. The missing link is the fact that uh, probably the security agencies that have been the 27 security agencies that we have in the country have not been doing enough in terms of doing hitting the nail uh, on the head so that President Muhammad Buhari can feel the, 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 can have the feeling of the situation for what really needed to be done. Mm. I commend the AIG uh, 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 Kasana and the Commissioner of Police Kasana for their efforts over time. And even the uh, Commissioner of Police of the FCT, they have been trying as much as possible to speak the truth which is the inadequacy of the personnel, lack of okay. the manpower. Okay. And those who are at the helm of the affairs have been grossly enriched to the fact that we have passed allegations and assertions that government and the which haunting agencies of government, the ICPC and EFCC, should follow off with those who are posted to those areas and reaffirm why have they not been providing the right and correct information. Mm. Oh. So I believe honestly and sincerely that the missing link is having the unscrupulous element, internal sabotage, and surround sabotage within, and inability of Muhammad Buhari to act despite the fact that the public have been complaining mm. about oh. the issues mm. around him. Right. The media have done very well and we commend you for what you have been doing. And I believe that the information units and the intelligence have been poorly managing the security in the country, as even ascertained by him, the President Muhammad Buhari, mm. many times to court. One of the time was when he visited the, 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 the prison, uh, the Kujia prison after the jailbreak. I believe if Muhammad Buhari could have acted by dismissing the Minister of Defense, by dismissing the Minister of Interior, by dismissing the DG prison, especially by the statement he made that the prison, those uh, prisons have not been provided for uh, the keeping of the, uh, the, the terrorists. And, but he has been holding and managing the terrorists for more than two years. And he, President Muhammad Wari responded to them that he is not happy with the performance of the intelligence, if I caught it very well. Okay, I know right. he made some, something so, like that. Very, thank you very much, Doctor, um, for, for those insights. Now, Mohan Nasr, let me come to you now. Um, I, I was going to ask you the media question, actually, but it has already, and I had to ask one now. But, but there's one, the one point that um, the doctor has actually made. A lot of people 
have, have, have had this idea that the, the ins insurgency, terrorism, banditry, all these security challenges that we're actually facing has been allowed to fester because of a, a, a perceived inability to be decisive when it comes to taking action. And a lot of people believe that those in charge of these security agencies have, so have a certain degree of I display a certain degree of laxity because there's actually no accountability. Something might happen on your watch and nobody gets punished. Do you think that is the case? Why, why, why this situation has, has festered for as long as it has? Well, uh, even if it may not, <coughs> sorry, even if it may not be among the reason, it's certainly not good, mm. uh, you know, uh, even for the image of the force, uh, for you to, to be found wanting in your responsibility and then for you to be maintained. Uh, if you remember, uh, we had uh, the, the former service chiefs that were there before uh, the, the, the current ones that we have. They have sort of overstayed. Mm. Actually, so many generals had to go, mm. you know, because, because of they were overstaying. their overstaying. So, so if you look at that, uh, you will understand probably the mind of the president is not like uh, uh, given to, to, to changing, you know, the head of the security agencies all the time. Probably there is something he has seen in them, which we may not mm. at our own level be able to see, uh, which is maybe the reason why he is keeping some of them. But if you talk about uh, the, the, the punishment aspect of it, I wouldn't say uh, those found wanting are not being punished, uh, even though the number may not be up to what so many of us will uh, expect, you know, uh, because uh, the EFCC, the ICPC, right now they have so many cases that are pending, you know, that are actually ongoing, you know, involving some of these uh, security, uh, heads of security agencies and what have you. So the media on its part, actually if you look at that, and if you know the Nigerian media very well, you know, it will be unfair, you know, to say that uh, the media is not even reporting, you know, some of the things that are happening. Because even if you say that, we also have the, the people now have access to the social media. Mm -hmm. And you know, the social media is ubiquitous. You know, it reaches so many people, you know, at the same time, just like the traditional media is actually able to do. So if you are talking about improvement in security, uh, if there is no improvement, if you go on social media platforms, you will be able to see it. Mm. Because like so many people will argue, uh, you know, we all have our own little world. Mm -hmm. uh, I can tell you, uh, for instance, that uh, security in my own part of the country is good. And then the same person, you know, from another part of the country may tell you a different thing. So if you look at it from the media perspective, that's what we should be looking at. Mm. You know, the fact that so many people are not happy, but then you also have others that are uh, maybe commending the president, you know, mm. for the little effort. Because if you know where some of these people are coming from, mm. and then what they are, uh, the situation that they are presently in, then you will be able to understand anytime they open their mouth to say, uh, this is what the government is getting right, this is what the government is not mm. getting right, mm. and then you will be able to draw your own conclusion based on what you know. All right, so while, while, we're, while we're at it, um, so, so that um, we, we get this right, while we're talking about the media, now, um, uh, we, we, we talked about a situation whereby um, the, the, the atmosphere whereby the media, the Nigerian media is operating when it comes to these issues, when it comes to insecurity, when it comes to reporting insecurity, um, lots of media houses have been accused of saying the glorifying terrorism and making and, 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 and all sorts of that from coming from the government side now. So when it comes to the issue of reporting, does the media find itself in a situation whereby they're, they're, they're damned if they do, they're damned if they don't? Because if they don't report it, then that means uh, people will have this false sense of security that, oh, things are fine. And if they do, they get accused of glorifying terrorism. Is that the situation the Nigerian media finds itself right now? Well, you know, there are actually two things. Uh, the media does not create event. Mm. Mm. You know, it only reports uh, things that are happening. Mm. Sure. Sometimes the government, uh, I wouldn't want to say hide, but the sort of, you know, use the, 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 the <coughs> issue of national interest mm. to say that uh, what you are reporting, what you are letting the people to know is actually 
you know, running against the national interest. But what we need to do is to be able to separate between what uh, a national interest is and then maybe the interest of those in power. Mm. You know, those in power, you know, they want to be seen in good light. Mm. So anytime you have a story that does not favor them, it's understandable that they may, you know, Target. cry foul, say mm. whatever they want to say. But do they give us the credit anytime the media reports things that are, uh, you know, uh, positive. positive about the government? Because if you know, for instance, the kind of uh, criminalities that happen in Johannesburg, for instance, mm. if the media in South Africa is to devote, you know, uh, its coverage to, to, to the things that are happening, things that are not working normal, believe me, there will be no space for any story. Mm. The same thing with Nigeria. If we are to say that uh, we'll look just at uh, the issue of insecurity, we may not even have uh, places for the economy, other mm. issues, you mm. know, that are very important. So the media, well, uh, is something that we just have to live with. Mm. Uh, because, you know, as, as uh, it's just like what people, uh, the, the the example that people will give you with water. Sometimes mm. you drown in it, mm. and then when it comes to preparing for burial, mm. you use the same water, water to, to, to wash. So, mm. so that's like the role of the media. Mm. You know, whether you like it or not, this is a responsibility that we have, which is even recognized by the Constitution, mm. and uh, we play it to the best of our ability. Mm. Um, Doctor, I was, I was just um, trying to also put into context um, the way and manner the president has been consistently passing on this message. And something I find very interesting in his line of messaging is, is always in, in, in referring to this victory, he talks about the Boko Haram element. They have succeeded in weapon. Yeah, it, but, but what we have seen is a metamorphosis. Um, what started as Boko Haram has now moved, taken various forms. Uh, Criminality, whether we call it banditry or criminality or uh, uh, what do you call it, so rustling, rustling as, as we have seen <clears throat> in very, very uh, frightening proportion. I, I mean, it surprises one how you can rustle over a thousand cows for several kilometers and there are no, there are no security intervention. When you can barely move with a bike or a motorcycle from one market to another without several uh, security agencies wanting to extort. Uh, something from you. Is it that the president is failing to understand that these things have metamorphosized and taken fresh from, even though the crim criminal elements continue to fester and that more places have come under their control than just, just the northeast as we used to have, because the initial inclination is that this thing is confined to one section of the country. But I mean, just by Suleja here, the Kaduna Abuja Road, there are places you can't go to because of this criminal element. What, what is it do you think the president is finding difficult to reconcile? Well, uh, there are three things. One, inability of the president to have the right information in respect to the number of manpower available we have within the 27 uh, security uh, uh, agencies that we have, and also to know the gap. Because as far as I'm concerned, the total number of security agencies we have put together, from the 27 uh, security agencies, using the airstrike and land operations, what we have available cannot cover the challenges we have by 27 to tw more than 27 to 28 at maximum 30%. So 70% is missing in the Army, in the Air Force, in the uh, intelligence, naval intelligence, defense intelligence, and Air Force intelligence, DSS, and the like. That is one. Uh, secondly, the number of the required recruitment that's supposed to have been made mm -hmm. have not been made. Mm -hmm. Even though at a recent time, something happened where large number of security personnel were recruited by the police uh, 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 constabulary, whatever they call it. But they made a mistake, and that mistake had been recorded, and it will continue to be against them, whereby all the, uh, uh, zonal, uh, the AIGs made mention that the recruitment is meant purposely to tackle the incoming 2023 election preparedness and election challenges.
which means that the government have not given the human life, the human being, the large population that are being killed, kidnapped, and so on and so forth. So when you don't have, when you have a house, and you have 27 doors, and you are the only person to lock it, and in between one and the other, you have to move three hours. How many hours do you have at night? And will you be able to cover all the doors to make sure that they are locked? So we don't have adequate personnel. And we also have the sabotage within and around the government of President Muhammad Buhari. Mm. People keep saying that uh, the, the uh, long, long staying um, service chiefs have left the service. As far as I'm concerned, those who we are saying that have left the service, they are still in service. Mm. It is still their boys that are there. Mm. All the security chiefs and all the security heads of Nigeria, they knew if they are watching me, they knew I have one-on-one -on -one interface with them. Mm. And all these things I'm saying here, I have said it to them, mm. either directly mm. or either indirectly. Mm. But I have my evidence to testify that they have not been able, if at all we are serious and sincere and honest, mm. we will have recruited the unemployed youth between the age of 17 to 22 to 25. Mm. We are using the polling unit, mm. the political world, and local government for leadership recruitment. Okay. So since we have a front mm. challenges, we mm. could have used that strategy mm. to recruit minimum of 80 per polling unit. Thank you very much. If sir. in a political world you have 10 polling mm. units, you will have 800. Thank you. If in a local government you have 10 political what you will have 8,000. Out of 773 local governments that we have in Nigeria, let's file out this strategy. Mm. In fact, all the government is serious. Be rest assured, we can be able, security challenges is in Nigeria is manageable. Okay. And I have a strategy for which if the Buhari administration mm. is still serious, within 28 days, mm. we can bring down the security challenges from 100 to 60, 65 to 70%. Thank you very but much, But we don't Dr. have a serious government. Thank, thank you, Dr. Yauza. I wish um, we had the time to allow you to expose on some of those intelligent um, uh, perspectives that you are bringing to bear in this program. But unfortunately, we are pressed for time. <laughs> And we have to go. I hope that when we call on you next time, uh, you would oblige us uh, the opportunity to come here and, yes, and digest some of those, um, those, those, those perspectives that you have. Malem Nasser, it's a pleasure to have kept you in the studio for this okay. long. I hope uh, we will be able to pay for it uh, <laughs> when the time comes. Uh, and viewers at home, thank you very much for allowing us free access into your house and for sparing us time. And being part of this conversation, we have so many interesting programs lined up for you for throughout the day. If you have missed out on anything, uh, please request to our social media handle uh, to catch up on them, whether it is on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter, and all other social uh, media handles that are available uh, to you. Let us do this again tomorrow. I am Sunday Michael Ogun. All right, it's been a pleasure being here on a day break on Trusted TV. Just like you said, let's do it all again tomorrow. I am Ibrahim Yusuf.